I just finished this epoxy project. It has a stained glass bird and a stained glass flower embedded inside the epoxy. I think it's unique. It came out great. However, the road to get here was pretty bumpy. What do you think? Should we stop here? The silicone mold I'm using is six by six by one and a half inches. I'm using isopropyl alcohol to clean the mold and the stained glass parts. I wasn't sure what I was gonna place inside the epoxy and mold. Then I found this bird and flower in my stained glass spare parts bin. My plan is to offset the two. I want the flower to be behind the bird. I'm mixing up equal parts of Let's Resin Tabletop Epoxy. The epoxy must be thoroughly mixed, scraping all sides and bottom of the cup continually for a couple of minutes. I'm only gonna pour about a quarter of an inch layer of the epoxy on the bottom of the mold. There will be lots of tiny bubbles in the epoxy. The blast of a heat gun will pop all the bubbles. I then drop the flour in place and let it harden overnight. I cover it up to keep all of the dust out. Then I'll come back every few minutes to check on it during the first 15 or 20 minutes to make sure no new bubbles appear. If they do, I'll blast them with the heat gun. For my second coat, I'm not going to be using this tabletop epoxy. When you're filling a space greater than one inch, you need to use something called a deep pour. And that's what I'm going to use here. Let's Resin has a deep pour as well as a tabletop. To calculate exactly how much I'm going to need, it's real simple. You can either go online and plug in your numbers into this online calculator, but it's easy. You can do it yourself. It's simply calculate the volume in inches, which is length by width by height which in this case, it's six by six times one and a half inch. And then you multiply that by 0.55, and that calculates to 30 ounces, just a little bit under 30 ounces. So I'm gonna mix up 30 ounces of the deep pour to fill the rest of the space. Before pouring the second coat, I need to scuff up the first coat. I'll use some fine sandpaper for that. This will allow the second coat better adhesion. Don't worry, there won't be any scuff marks visible after pouring the second coat. The epoxy will still look crystal clear. I don't want the bird to sit right on top of the flower, so I'm going to add some spacers using this lead cane. What I should have done when pouring the epoxy was to add about a fourth of it at a time, then remove the bubbles using a heat gun. By pouring the whole volume all at once, I did have some deep bubbles that the heat gun couldn't reach. I used a long needle to work them to the surface. Eventually, all the bubbles were dealt with. I then covered it up and babysat it for about 30 minutes to deal with any new air bubbles that appeared. About three days later, I was able to remove it from the mold. While it looked almost perfect, there was this sharp lip around the whole perimeter of the epoxy. I didn't like that, so my plan is to sand the top, bottom, and sides perfectly smooth and then pour a thin layer of tabletop epoxy over the whole thing. What I'm doing here is putting tape on the back because when I pour the epoxy over the top and sides, some of it's going to drip onto the bottom. The tape will protect the bottom from overspill. What I'm not showing you is that this is my third time doing this step. I had to sand it down three other times until it came out perfect. I kept getting dried epoxy drips on the sides. I'm not sure why. Perhaps I just wasn't using enough epoxy. After the top and sides dried, I taped them up and then gave the back side its final coat. If you ever do a project like this, you may not be as fussy, but I was determined to make it perfect. Now I need a base worthy to display the project. I bought this piece of walnut wood at an estate sale for two bucks. Like most projects, you're gonna make mistakes along the way. Take your time, do it over if you have to, otherwise, you'll be sorry. If something's hard to do, then it's not worth doing. 